with no further ado, um, I will hand over to you. We've got uh, 20 minutes um, for your session, so please, please lead away. Uh, hello, everyone. Um, thank you for being here, and we're so honored to spend this time with you and to have the opportunity to virtually present this. Um, my name is Margaret Crone. I'm a second time presenter and um, I'm from UMass Amherst. I'm a doctoral candidate and I am here with my longtime friend and colleague, Dr. Chris Paul from North Carolina Central University. Today we're gonna be talking about, and the title of our talk is Sustainability Through Accessibility, the Essential Role of Universal Design and Sustainable open education. Um, and this presentation will address the theme of sustainable open education communities by investigating the opportunities of multi-dimensional sustainability through accessible educational um, resources. So today in our reflective practice, we have uh, four objectives. Uh, the first is to evaluate definitions and the linkages of sustainability and accessibility. Um, explore opportunities for sustainability through the promotion of accessibility in open educational communities and resources. Share some examples of research and teaching practices um, from early childhood education and also higher education in general. And engage with the audience about some opportunities for bridging sustainability and accessibility within their own educational domains. And now I'm going to hand it over to Chris. <clears throat> Thanks, Maggie. Um, so Maggie and I are part of a sustainability network uh, based in higher education organizations here in North Carolina in the US called the Trillium Workshop. And the Trillium Workshop defines sustainability as a tripartite goal of social, economic, and environmental sustainability. And by this, we mean that the elements of sustainability are interrelated, not just ensuring environmental quality um, and, and global resource sustainability, but also ensuring social sustainability through improving equity uh, by promoting economic sustainability, uh, ensuring access to the resources we need, and all of which promote the more traditional definition of environmental sustainability of uh, maintaining and promoting a better world. And so be, because of this, I think we think of, and at our most recent workshop, focused on the relationships between sustainability and justice, that ensuring sustainability is a key way to approach justice. And if part of uh, open educational resources uh, is about ensuring care and justice, we need to think about how we can ensure sustainability into all of our OER work. So uh, though we're not in person, and I'm sorry that uh, we can't meet you uh, together, we, we did wanna start by asking three questions um, that you can share in the chat box uh, or make notes to yourself um, either way of how you see justice and sustainability overlapping in your institution, uh, whether or not you have a course or program in mind that you are either already adapting or thinking about uh, involving sustainability or when you think about your programs, it could have better sustainability. And I think all of us uh, are finding new resilience and new needs in the COVID-19 crisis. Um, so think about what challenges to sustainability have been revealed. I know at our institutions in North Carolina, um, in some ways, I think we're quite surprised at how rapid people have been able to move to accessible online uh, and OER resources for our students um, and faculty. Uh, and so in some, in some sense, perhaps there was resilience there that we didn't know about uh, as we all shifted online. Um, so maybe uh, just take a moment to jot those down. You can share them in the chat box if you're able to. So, um, so moving, um, I'll give you one more moment. Um, and these slides, of course, like all will be available and we'd love to hear from you and converse in these questions at a later point as well. Um, 
Of course, a major uh, a major representation of sustainability is captured in the United Nations Sustainable Development Goals, uh, and and of these goals, uh, Sustainable Development Goal Number Four calls for quality education, uh, and specifically free, equitable, and quality education. And within that goal, there is a particular indicator, 4.8.1, that is assessing access to adapted infrastructure and materials for students with disabilities. And I think this is actually a, a key indicator, not just for access to those with disabilities, but a way to improve all abilities. And so what we'd like to talk about in our presentation is how addressing accessibility, uh, as noted in this sustainable development goal, is part of a way to move towards sustainability. Um, and so to talk about that, Maggie uh, will tell us about universal design for learning. Thank you, Chris. Um, so universal design for learning is an accessibility framework that addresses accessibility by helping people with and without disabilities uh, be um, become uh, people with abilities and both in terms of access to content in terms of understanding it um, and also talking about formatting as well. So there are three main principles that have, um, so we're gonna refer to it as UDL as noted in the uh, title of the slide um, to provide multiple means of action and expression, so the how of learning, engagement, the why, and representation, um, so the what of learning. And the connection we're trying to make with sustainability here in this presentation is that uh, UDL increases sustainability by helping educators create and use accessible and sustainable materials and resources that enhance a learner's ability to engage and learn. And I'm just gonna sort of um, go back a second and the in preparation for this I uh, for this presentation um, my response to question two that he asked about what program would you adapt I um, would adapt um, uh, working with pre-service teachers and uh, working in inclusive classrooms and in, especially in terms of social emotional learning and supporting children with disabilities and I feel like this is sustainable and by teaching them about universal design and accessibility in general early in their careers and nurturing them with knowledge and support will help them build reflective practices um, and sustainable practices in their classrooms. Since teachers teach what they know, if they have more knowledge, support and access to accessible information, it will not it will enhance their ability to teach with effective practices and keep an evolving practice. Um, uh, right now, we live in a digital age. Uh, we are, this conference overall theme is care, uh, which we argue can be translated as connecting sustainability and accessibility by increasing all learners access to educational resources, no matter what form they're in, so visual, auditory, physical, and so forth. There are various challenges, as um, Chris was discussing, and we are all experiencing with this COVID-19 um, epidemic, uh, that when we go digital, individuals with disabilities may face in accessing um, classroom materials. So it's important for us as educators to recognize and learn about how to address the four most common ways in which a disability may inhibit um, a person's access to the material. So as instructors, we should be aware of the visual, auditory, ambly, ambly excuse me, I'm sorry, um, <laughs> cognitive and speech. So we argued that UDL should be prioritized um, in the creation of OER with knowledge such as how digital access and it, those abilities affect it um, to demonstrate that accessibility is a form of care and sustainability. So I'm going to hand it to Chris now. 
Oh, um, I'm sorry. Um, so this one is, <laughs> so what we're doing here is we are just sort of trying to flip the framework here that, um, how can rather than thinking about what's the relationship between universal design and sustainability how can oer design ensure sustainability by using universal design uh, thanks thanks maggie so i think you know what we uh you know what we know is that traditional educational approaches are not sustainable um and you know the dis disruption of the COVID pandemic has definitely revealed many of these challenges. Uh, in, I, you know, in, in my own world, students don't have adequate access to the internet. Uh, they may or may not have had their own uh, resources uh, that faculty have assigned that are not OER. Uh, they may not have their own devices, um, even at the graduate level. Um, and so. Uh, access to education is costly and, and not sustainable in the traditional forms. Um, and this practice uh, creates uh, injustice. And so the, you know, the question is, what can we do to transform education for sustainability? And I think in, in what Maggie was saying is that we want to not just think of UDL as one example of something that should be expected of OER resources for improving accessibility, but creating resources that are uh, that are interadaptable and able to to be used in any context with uh, uh, with machine reading, with uh, uh, with uh, adap adaptation of visual and textual material, um, so that it is accessible across uh, settings and resource levels um, and can be uh, and can be scaled. I think the the key, though, is that this requires a lot of coordination uh, among educators to create accessible levels. I, I see uh, Deb uh, uh, Baff mentioned that in Wales, there's quite the challenge of having to create bilingual content um, for OER production because of that additional time. And this really is a good example of how uh, we need to have incentives to increase accessible OER materials, whether that's in language, in uh, machine readability and, and content. And we need to support our educators in, in creating sustainable and accessible OER. Um, because when uh, it's not just when we find ourselves in a global crisis, but uh, for each individual student, when they, are, uh, when they are in a setting where they can't access the materials, uh, they have no way to advance and no platform to build upon to grow. And so building these, building these uh, design tools of uh, accessibility generally is key to making our material sustainable because it increases the ability to be adaptable both to the individual and to institutions. Um, so OER communities such as this one uh, can help promote uh, sustainability and accessibility um, using good design broadly uh, and uh, and uh, UDL in the in the curriculum and in the classroom, both virtually and in person, um, uh, is is really critical. Uh, we we should also think about what the rules are around accessibility in OER materials, uh, and whether or not standards and uh, rules around OER need to be uh, increasingly focused on accessibility. Um, and of course, we need to provide the resources, uh, uh, the OER resources themselves, to help people uh, develop improved accessibility in uh, in their in their content. So Maggie's going to give us an example from early childhood education uh, and how uh, and how she's uh, integrating accessibility and improving sustainability. So I'm going to come from this from two angles um, in terms of. Um, accessibility and sustainability. Uh, first is from what's being done in the research, what's being reported. Um, and so early childhood teachers report um, that they have positive experiences when they are given accessible and sustainable sources, and that it helps them reflect and continually improve on their current teaching practices. Um, and most of this research is coming from Australia, but 
people are beginning to take a critical and historical approach in researching and reviewing um, sustainability and the materials that are given to early childhood educators, which I think is progress, but more work needs to be done, especially in regards to um, universal design, not just in the classroom that teachers are doing with their students, but um, giving them like in the curriculum that they're being taught with. Um, and as an educator, um, myself and as an instructional designer, um, I have learned a lot about there are many ways to make a class sustainable through accessibility um, using universal design. So you can organize your course um, so that you, anyone, regardless of their ability or disability, can navigate it. You can use transcription and closed caption. Um, you can teach your students about OER and have them build OER resources as assignments. And I've done this um, through a grant through Massachusetts and it was really powerful, um, both in the reflection of what the students learned and uh, what I learned. You can use accessible formatting and you can make alternative assignments. And I think the biggest point as an educator and I think in response to the question we had about COVID-19 is, when we're in a hurry, we often use technology, but it is important to match the use of technology with the learning goals and objectives of your course and keep that in mind um, uh, when thinking about accessibility because then the um, it's sustainable. So just to give a quick example of um, from Sorry. my personal. Five, five more minutes. Okay, from my personal work is I created an alternative assignment for early childhood educators teaching them about play. Um, and we used um, videos and voice thread and um, gave consistent directions. And so there's a link um, on this page to learn more about it. And this is an open source example. So I'm gonna hand it off to Chris now. Yeah, and just, I, I'm Right. Formatting on this one. <laughs> yeah, unfortunately, you can't see the picture um, of our conference because Maggie had put these blue halos around us. So you'll just have to imagine what we look like. But <laughs> the um, the example. Uh, so Maggie talked about early childhood education, and um, and I run a graduate program in North Carolina in the U.S. Um, and as part of this Trillium workshop that uh, we. Uh, we are working across all levels of education or based in higher education to think about uh, integrating sustainability across our programming. So it's both faculty and staff uh, and it's improving sustainability through the sharing of data and resources across institutions of learning. Um, we used uh, an accessible design workshop, uh, accessibly designed workshop each year with online resources. Um, and you, if you follow the link in the presentation, you can also learn more about uh, the most recent workshop where we are addressing justice and environmental sustainability. So I think Maggie will wrap it up with a, a few more questions for you and we appreciate the, the chats. Uh, so um, what we wanted to end this presentation with is as educators, what are some of the opportunities that we can use to bridge sustainability and accessibility? So thinking about this in terms of barriers um, that you face in increasing accessibility in your um, and open at your both your communities and the resources of OER and also what are some of the possible sustainable solutions to overcome these barriers really these questions in terms of a virtual conversation um, are to get the conversation started um, and I can say you know, um, obviously we have formatting to overcome with our Blackboard Collaborate. I, I was going to say that the, you know, so that may be one is technical barriers. Um, but I, many of you in the chat have mentioned the resources uh, necessary, uh, which often often means that the dedicated time. So that our institutions are often constantly changing and growing, and rarely do we set aside the time for faculty and staff to say. What do we need to do to make sure that these resources are accessible? Um, and that, that has to be there. And that's true for language translation, for uh, machine readability. Um, and so that, uh, you know, I think we, um, 
you know, we really appreciate you being here in this presentation today with us uh, and you know, certainly ask you to take back to your groups, uh, thinking of, you know, making sure that you put on the agenda to think about uh, design features and accessibility. Um, um, and sort of last but not least, and I'm so sorry for the um, technical difficulties, I will work with Alt to make sure that we are, um, that we have a downloadable format that is not wonky. Um, yes, there is a rubric for checking accessibility. Kathy, I can answer that question after this. Uh, we uh, could not be here. So innovators, it's really important that we as um, innovators connect. And so um, we have connected with a bunch of communities and we just wanted to acknowledge them. Um, the Massachusetts and uh, North Carolina resources that we have used. Um, and uh, our references slide here is uh, just to give you an idea of um, which resources we use. And now I think we have time for questions. Thank you, Maggie and Chris. So um, I think we've got time for um, uh, one question. If anyone wants to raise their hand, we can give the, the microphone to you. But, um, I think uh, we can also work with you, Maggie and Chris, and um, just uh, providing a link. For slides. I think a lot of people are really interested in what you were talking about and um, uh, all the links you were sharing as well. So. Um, we can work on that, but um, do we have any questions? <laughs> you can also, sorry. I, also. I did want to just uh, call attention to um, uh, Mira on on the chat pointed out a really wonderful term. I don't know if that's hers or it's been used elsewhere, but accessibility debt is um, really an excellent way to think about it that we, we rush into creating materials so often and don't address accessibility till afterwards. And, it, um, and so that, you know, I think that's an important way to think about our obligation to reduce that debt among the work that we do um, and among that of our colleagues. Um, yeah, and I just wanted to say I shared the Google link, um, which may have been part of the problem of going from two different platforms of running it from Google to PowerPoint. So there is a link in the chat right now currently if people would like. Um, access to it. So, well, thank you, Maggie and Chris. So, um, uh, I'm sure if people have any follow-up questions, they can uh, um, reach out to you, and also um, you can follow the chat as well. Um, can we just show our appreciation? I've copied uh, Maggie's link as well, and I'll add that to their session page. Um, with permission, um, just so you can grab it there as well. And um, I'm just going to uh, swap out the slides, and um, we can invite uh, Dominic to the stage. Hello, testing. Hi, Dominic. So I'm just getting your slides ready now. Here you go. And hopefully my network is going to permit this. So try that again. So Dominic um, is going to be talking about uh, changing educational policy.